We finished Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 0, so Season 1 is next. Actually, I wanted to split it into two parts, because there are so many episodes, but I prefer one part per season, even if it means more stress for me. So leave a thumbs up and let's enjoy some Yu-Gi-Oh! now. Yugi talks about his grandfather's game store and the super rare card at school, where Kaiba then thought that sneaking into class was worth it after all. It's the blue eyes, of which there are only four in the entire world. Kaiba wants it, gets rejected and swerves revenge. Grandpa Muto is kidnapped, so Kaiba can get his duel against him. Arrived, Grandpa lies half dead on the floor. Kaiba has already won the blue eyes and tears up the card. To teach Kaiba a lesson, Yugi takes Grandpa's deck and challenges him to a duel. But before that, they draw the symbol of friendship and Grandpa is taken to the hospital. Yugi transforms into Yami and the duel begins. Yugi takes on the Cyclops, Sagi the Clown gets powered up, destroyed the Winged Dragon and Yugi draws the first Exodia card. He starts losing monster after monster until he summons Gaia. Too bad Kaiba has the blue eyes. So bye bye Gaia. Then the second blue eyes and even the third. Yugi is about to lose but still believes in the power of friendship and summons Exodia, causing Kaiba to lose the duel. Kaiba suffers a mind crush, Grandpa Muto somehow senses that Yugi has won and Pegasus makes an appearance. More duels at school. This time Joey even loses to Tia, so he becomes Solomon's apprentice. On TV Rex and Weevil have a duel, which Weevil wins, while Yugi gets a package with a VHS, a glove and two stars. On the tape we get a close up of Pegasus. There he challenges Yugi to a duel. He freezes time. Yugi transforms and the countdown starts. The duel is pretty strange with Yugi being able to interact with the videotape and Pegasus being able to see the cards of Yugi's hand and so predict his moves. After a short history lesson, Yugi outsmarts Pegasus by playing a card he didn't even see. With my luck I would easily play Tia. As time runs out, Yugi is about to win the duel if Pegasus' face down card isn't too dangerous. But Yugi lost because of the timeout, so Pegasus captures Solomon's soul with his Millennium Eye. Time moves on, just not for Solomon. Too bad they can't just rewind the tape. Joey also gets a VHS, but this one is from his little sister Serenity. Yugi gets cards from Pegasus so that he can participate in the tournament, with a prize money of 3 million dollars. In the past, Joey and Tristan must have been quite jerks. But when Yugi stood up for them, they became friends. In order for Yugi's friends to come along, Yugi gives Joey one of his starships, while Tristan and Tia make themselves comfortable in a container. Yugi is famed because he defeated Kaiba. The others on the ship trade their cards. One of them, for example, an Exodia card. Joey also traded some cards with Yugi, who gives him the Wizard of Time as a bonus. Then Weevil comes around with the most honorless action in anime history and throws the Exodia overboard. Joey wants to save them, got two. Until then Yugi saves Joey, so Tristan and Tia save the two. This leaves Yugi with only two pieces of the Exodia. If he trades something with that guy, then he might have three again. Joey tells about his sister and that she will go blind without surgery. On Duelist Kingdom, Pegasus says that you need 10 starships to get into the castle. So on your marks, go! First they meet Weevil, against whom Yugi starts a duel. B with 1200 destroys Yugi's Mammoth with 1200, because the B gets a bonus from the forest. So it has 1560 attack points. Thus Yugi is at a disadvantage with a field power bonus. Or not, because his mammoth also gets a field power bonus from the wasteland. So both are destroyed after all. Yugi strengthens his feral imp with a spell card. 2000 attack points should be enough for Weevil's Beetle with 1950 attack points, but monsters with field power bonus are of course immune to spells, so imp's lightning is useless and the beetle somehow manages to destroy the imp. Then Weevil summons his basic insect which gets a field power bonus and also adds two spell cards to it. Didn't they just say? Ah, uh, never mind. Weevil is clearly cheating, so Yugi does it too. He now secretly plays a card face down, although it's Weevil's turn. And with this card, he wipes out Weevil's army at once. Weevil tricks Yugi, who now has the cocoon of evolution. In 5 turns, it turns into the Great Moth. Also, the defense points are too high, so Yugi can't do anything. Yugi tries it with Gaia anyways and loses 300 life points, even though he actually knew that beforehand. To destroy the cocoon, Yugi uses his Curse of Dragon with Burning Lands to destroy the field power bonus. This leaves the cocoon with only 2000 defense points, allowing Gaia to get his revenge. Cocoon destroyed, yet a moth comes out of it. Of course it's a bit weaker now after 4 turns than it would be after 5, but it's alive. 
Yugi fuses his Gaia with his Curse of Dragon, which loses more and more attack points because the moth exudes poison. Maku is used to rain it off, which doesn't help Gaia anymore. Yugi only has 50 life points left. He summons the Summon Skull, which has gotten a stronger attack thanks to Maku's rain and his lightning. With that the moth is down, Weevil lost and is out of the tournament. So Joey gets a glove and Yugi has 3 star chips. Joey is on fire to finally duel. And there comes his opponent, my Valentine. So it's time to duel. Legendary Swordsman who gets a field power bonus of 330. Mai turns into a Psyche who knows without seeing what kind of cards she plays. And despite the fact that Mai has a stronger Harpy on the field and it's still her turn, Joey attacks. But he loses not because his monster is weaker, but because the Harpy is a flying monster. Tiger X is equally strong, but loses because she flies. Pimp my Harpy and Joey is in trouble. So focus. He can smell mice cards now from this gigantic distance. And that's exactly her trick. However she does that with so many and such strong aromas. Joey gets serious now and summons the baby dragon. My duplicates a harpier, doesn't matter though. Joey summons the wizard of time, aging the harpiers and making his baby dragon strong. Attack with 2400 against 1300 and Joey won. Since of course you lose all 2000 life points when you have 1100 difference. Our friends are hungry and thanks to Joey's good nose they head for the fried fish. There they meet Marco Tsunami who eats together with them, talks a bit with them and then duels with Yugi. Yugi doesn't see Marcus monsters and can't attack them because they are underwater. He summons the Horn Imp which is destroyed directly in his own turn. So the Feral Imp comes together with the Horn of the Unicorn. With the new lightning attack he wants to fry the water monsters. Just too bad that Marco played the jellyfish which intercepts his attack. Counter attack and there goes the imp even if it's actually stronger. And Yugi even loses life points. Doggo plus Moon loses 2 against the Kairio Shin. Not only that but he almost completely covered Yugi's field in water. Now Marco's passed. While fishing his father disappeared. The end. Giant soldier is surrounded, easily destroys the moon so that the water ebbs away and the water monsters are on dry land. Next comes Curse of Dragon with Burning Land with which he roasts everyone and thus wins the duel. Two more star chips for Yugi. Mokuba has fled, Pegasus don't care. A bodyguard carries a player without star chips to the boat who hasn't lost in a duel but his star chips have been stolen. Our friends meet the thief whom Yugi wants to crush in a duel. Both now bet 5 star chips. And the boy is of course Mokuba. He wants to take revenge on Yugi because he defeated Kaiba. However he is probably the worst player in all of Konoha. That's why he loses super fast and tells about the takeover of Pegasus and the big five of the Kaiba corporation. Since Mokuba is so bad he wants to steal the star chips from Yugi but then decides against it after the talk no jutsu. Meanwhile Kaiba is doing some research and has to escape as the guards threaten him with fingers. He jumps out of the window but leaves his deck behind. Mokuba wants to return the star chips but they are just slapped away. For whatever reason Mokuba still hasn't handed Yugi's back. And to free Mokuba again Yugi must duel Kaiba next. Kaiba is said to have died and the ghost now wants to duel with Yugi. He can even communicate telepathically with Yugi which he somehow only does at the beginning for the flex. Ghost Kaiba starts the duel like an episode at 1, only Yugi immediately summons the magician and almost wins the duel with an attack. But Kaiba can't lose because Yugi doesn't have Exodia anymore. Then some real Kaiba who survived the fall and goes to his hacker bunker. From there he gets up to date and hacked into the duel between Yugi and the fake Kaiba. The first blue eyes is summoned so Yugi can only defend himself but fake Kaiba counters and attacks. With the magical heads Yugi can drag out the duel a bit. Yugi hides the circle under her head instead of just activating it. Luckily the blue eyes hits the right head which now weakens it and gets down by the dark magician. But here comes the second dragon to ruin the party and seek revenge for its body. Kaiba is a little confused wondering why Yugi is dueling against Kaiba although he's hacking. And so he infects his blue eyes with a virus which can't attack anymore and is destroyed. But wait it wasn't the virus that did it, it was Kaiba's sheer willpower. Kaiba bursts because this isn't Kaiba at all but his evil alter ego which Yugi has freed in the last duel with a mind crush. Kaiba had to escape from the bunker while Yugi summons his mystical elf. Ghost Kaiba then gets his third blue eyes, wants to end the duel, gets to deal with mirror force which effect he simply stops with negate attack. Alright. Next Yugi revives the blue eyes from the graveyard, boosts it with the spell from the elf 
attacks and wins the duel. Mind crush! Intimidate Pegasus, take Kaiba's deck and the bodyguards has taken Mokuba. Tristan's got cards too! Even one that's similar to Joey's. Mai wants to get back at Joey, so she strikes a deal with Rex. If he beats Joey, he gets a rematch against Mai. And even Joey's own friends don't think he stands a chance. Tristan gets pushed, who then runs away and the duel begins. Joey summons the baby dragon, but it's quickly destroyed. Liu Gun? No way, Rex has a field power bonus and comes out on top. Joey's x raider takes on Rex, but then another dino destroys the x raider Meanwhile, Joey brings Tristan back. Joey starts taking out dino after dino with his flame swordsman, because they can't handle the heat. But then a dragon comes in and destroys the monsters. Lucky for Joey, he draws Tristan's card and gets both battle guards on the field, which support each other and take down Rex's dragon. Rex summons his red eyes. Yugi thinks that he can't even take on the blue eyes. Yeah, sure. In any case, their two brothers can't. And Rex makes it exciting now. He bets his red eyes and Joey bets his time wizard. Joey activates its effect and BAM! It's game over for the red eyes and Rex's life points. So Joey has gained 4 stars plus the red eyes now. Good thing they run into Mai, who graciously offers to share food with them. While eating, she goes away for a moment, is kidnapped, but Bakura comes out of the bushes. Now everyone chooses their favorite card, they are all shuffled into Yugi's deck, then he takes out his millennium ring, separates each soul and puts it into the deck. But before he can even lay a hand on the puzzle, Yami Yugi appears, ready for a duel. Yugi summons Tristan in defense, who gets instantly destroyed. So Tristan's soul goes straight to the graveyard. Joey is not about to let that slide, so he takes revenge. The next monster's effect sends their hand to the graveyard and they each draw a new one. Again one face down in defense, then Yugi summons Yugi and gets Tristan back. Again the hand is retaken and again one goes face down in defense, which Bakura uses to pull down 500 life points per monster on Yugi's side. Boy that's just a fucking instant win when the opponent has even 4 monsters on the field. Next up is the man eater bug. Tristan wants to sacrifice himself for the cause, but Joey pretends to be Zoro and sacrifices himself instead. Action of honor. So run boy! Before he gets caught by the Grim Reaper, Yugi revives him with Tia's effect and thus monster reborn. With change of heart, Bakura wants to take Yugi, but the good Bakura goes into a monster of Bakura. Then Yami switched the good with the evil soul of Bakura, so the evil one is now on the field and gets destroyed. Duel over, learn something about the origin of the ring and then it's off to a scream. Mai has lost against Panic and loses all her starships. Panic is an eliminator who wants to win the starships of other players. Next up is Yugi who also bets all his star chips. To make him a little more comfortable, Panic turns up the heat for him. With Castle of Dark Illusions, Panic's sight is completely darkened, so Yugi again doesn't know what monsters his opponent has and where they are. Yugi takes a risk by showing Panic his lightsabers, which he could use to stop the darkness, but he doesn't play them for 5 turns, but he puts them face down. So Mystical Space Typhoon and that's it. Until then, Yugi just defends himself. Panic summons the Reaper, which can destroy destroy Yugi's face down card. But little does he know, Yugi has tricked him. It isn't the lightsabers at all, but the spellbinding circle. Now he really sets the lightsabers and another card face down. 4 more turns until Yugi activates the lightsabers. Panic summons the king of Yamimakai and tries to attack Curse of Dragon, but the light from the circle deflects the darkness attack, causing Panic to destroy his own reaper and bringing him dangerously close to 0 life points. Yugi skips a few turns and just plays the lightsabers now. In 3 turns he now wants to finish the duel completely. Panic combines a guard with his castle, which prevents Yugi from attacking. But Yugi foresaw that though, however he knew Panic had this card in the first place. Gaia gets fused who still isn't strong enough though. Panic panics because Yugi is so damn confident and then the predicted turn comes. Yugi summons Catapult Turtle and using it to launch Gaia at the castle. The castle is left in shambles, held together only by the lightsabers. But as soon as they disappear, the castle collapses on Panic's monster, causing Panic to lose the duel. Oh yeah, love that logic. Another mind crush! Stars back and then they part ways again. Kaiba flies to Duelist Kingdom to free his little brother. He lands right in front of our heroes, gets his deck back from Yugi and presents his latest invention in a duel with Joey. Without even shuffling his deck or drawing his card, Kaiba summons his Minotaur. So does Joey, but his monster is weaker again. Even the stronger Flame Swordsman loses because the Minotaur is immune to fire attacks. 
I guess the sword itself doesn't even matter. The Minotaur gets fused, destroying Joey's monsters one by one. Even his red eyes doesn't impress Kaiba a bit, as he pulverizes it with his blue eyes as well, ending the duel. Kaiba talks about the power of Pegasus and reminisces about an all tournament, where a kid with Pegasus instructions defeated Bandit Keith. And with that, Kaiba takes off for the castle. After the defeat, Joey dreams badly, but is all the more motivated for the next duel. Perfect, because Bandit Keith's crew already targets him. They prepare everything, knocks him out and bring him to the arena so that Bones has an advantage. Actually, they could have just stolen the starships from him. Would be much easier. And the duel starts with four starships. First Bones summons a lot of fodder, so that his graveyard is filled a bit and then he can get them back as zombies with Call of the Haunted. Of course they get a field power bonus now and destroys Joey's monsters. In the meantime the friends are already looking for Joey and find the cave. Where did Joey's flame swordsman disappear to between the last episode and this one? No one knows but it isn't important because Joey's Garuse splits the clown now. Too bad Call of the Haunted is on the field making the zombies indestructible and getting stronger every time they are destroyed. Meanwhile, Bakura triggers a trap, gets run over by a rock, which Tristan then punches apart because that's actually just a balloon. Joey tries a time spell, but loses the bet. Our friends join, Joey gets new courage and with sword and shield, the zombies attack points drop to zero and Joey sends them back to the graveyard, where they belong, thus wins the duel. As revenge, they lock up our friends in the cave and Bennett Keith takes the starships from his men to get access to the castle. Bakura's ring leads our friends to Para and Dogs, who challenge Joey and Yugi to a double duel. In the first turn they play Labyrinth Wall, which transforms the entire field. A small riddle without sense, which should only confuse the two, and where there's actually no real solution. And then the two merge the maze with the Shadow Ghoul, to be able to freely travel through the maze and destroy the monsters. Joey and Yugi try to lure the wall shadow into a trap and actually get him. But the maze is still there, even though they are few and the monsters destroyed. Jiraigumu is played face down as a trap and then we see Mokuba, who is held by Pegasus completely normally. The crazy maze continues as they change it a bit. Joey steps on Jiraigumu to snack the Rex Raider and the Flame Swordsman has also peed in his pants already. But Yugi combines 1 plus 1, destroying the spider and protecting the Flame Swordsman from other monsters. Meanwhile, Kaiba arrives at the castle, where Pegasus seems to be expecting him for some reason. Dungeon Worm without effects has the effect of attacking anywhere on the field. Tamer without effect powers up the worm to attack ahead. With this however, Joey knows where the worm is and lets the fire from the flame swordsman burn, destroying the worm. Para and Dogs summon the Gate Guard while Kaiba continues to search for Mokuba within the castle. Gate Guardian can attack above the maze but is stopped by Yugi, which is stopped again by Gate Guardian, which the Tamer then gets off. Yeah, makes sense. Now the Flame Swordsman tries it, gets blocked and gets washed away. With a now wet field, the Summoned Skull is able to channel its lightning through the water, destroying one of the three Guardians. Merge him with the Red Eyes, who can't move because flying isn't allowed. I guess he can't use his legs or something. In any case, Dark Magician steps in front of the Gate Guardian and swaps Law style places with it, allowing Yugi to burn the Gate Guardian and win the duel. Yugi and Joey thus have 10 starships each, but now have to decide which door they use. Yugi tricks them because the door they choose would be wrong. So he just takes the one they didn't take. Meanwhile, Kaiba has arrived at Mokuba, who is trapped in a cart by Pegasus and being used as a leverage against Kaiba. Tia realizes that Yugi might actually beat two people. In an attempt to insult Yugi, he brings up how he saved her from Gohan in the past. But now isn't the time for our friends to head to the castle yet. Because Kaiba isn't a vegetarian and wants beef. He's being blackmailed by Pegasus to duel Yugi. If he wins, he gets to fight Pegasus and if he wins even that, he releases his brother. Bandit Keith checks in, Kaiba and Yugi throw off each other with starships and thus the duel can begin. Kaiba gives Yugi a lot of props for summoning the Curse of Dragon and destroying his monster. Then Kaiba summons the Sword Stalker and everyone thinks it was planned from the beginning, even though he just drew it. Yugi destroys it with the Dark Magician, whose next attack was reflected by Kaiba's Jin and his lamp, giving the Curse of Dragon a bit of a break. Kaiba wants to buy some time to be able to summon his ultimate. Yugi destroys the lamp and with it the Jin. when Kaiba also pulled off a combo with his crush card, which means Yugi can't summon any more monsters with 1500 attack points or more 
and can't activate any more trap cards. For whatever reason that, I don't know. Which makes the ultimate more than unnecessary, but I wouldn't miss the ego boost either. First he crushes Yugi's host with the blue eyes white dragon and then completely destroys them with the ultimate dragon. It's up to the final heart of the cards. Kuribo plus multiplier equals invincible. But that's not all. Yugi shoots his mammoth on the ultimate with the fusion and the living arrow to rot it piece by piece from the inside. So his attack points drop turn by turn. Switching him to defense position now would just be too smart. Instead he keeps attacking until Yugi can decapitate him with his Celtic Guardian. So what can he do now? Easy, threaten him with suicide. Bring back a head with Monster Reborn. Yugi will lose the duel if he doesn't attack. Yami wants to do it, but can't. So actually he already commanded to attack, but if he's already thinking to stop the attack, apparently that's enough. Kaiba gives Yugi the coup de grace and Yugi cries a bit because his grandfather seems to be lost forever. Quite different now than Mokuba. Mai shows up and gives Yugi 6 star chips because he helped her get hers back from panic. But Yugi doesn't want to accept them or he's just in shock. Tia steps in and offers to duel for the star chips saying that if she wins Yugi gets them. The problem is, she's the worst duelist in the world. She doesn't have any real tactics, barely knows the rules, but at least she manages to get Yugi's motivation back. Moreover, Mei quits, although she would actually win. So Yugi has 10 starships again and it's time to head to the castle to smack the one-eyed man. In the castle there's a little show. Kaiba against Pegasus. If Kaiba wins, he gets to take his brother back with him, which Pegasus certainly doesn't present with the chain and so on to put Kaiba under pressure. The arena comes dangling from the ceiling and nobody notices what a huge abyss this room has and there are no railings anywhere. This is fucking dangerous. At first Pegasus acts like he's doing badly to confuse Kaiba. Then he predicts the blue eyes which becomes his thanks to a spell card. He also predicts Kaiba's crush combo bypassing the tactic and protecting against the virus which really confuses Kaiba. Pegasus loves comics the most, probably that's why he's a hentai lover and activates his favorite card Toon World. Now all his monsters that go to Toon World becomes Toon Monsters. Even the blue eyes which triggers Kaiba pretty hard. He also notices that Pegasus this is somehow peeking into his cards, so he summoned the next one without looking and by luck it's the blue eyes. Too bad he can't destroy the Toon Dragon because Toon World is on the field. Pegasus gives the Toon Monsters a testosterone boost by adding 500 attack points. Kaiba ties up and destroys the Toon Dragon, but Pegasus seals the blue eyes and infects Kaiba's deck with the crush card to decide the duel in his favor. Therefore also seal his soul in a card, a little more beef with Yami Yugi and then dinner. There are the further courses explained. You have to have one of the two cards with you to participate and in the millennium eye in the soup there's also the draw for who they get to battle next. Yugi against Mai and Joey against Keith. Unfortunately neither Joey nor Keith have a card. Yugi being the kind soul that he is gives one of his cards to Joey. Later that night Joey and Yugi are asleep with Yugi having a nightmare while Mai prepares a deck against Yugi and Tia, Tristan and Bakuda are trying to figure out if Pegasus cheated during the duel with Kaiba. They break into a tower where they are confronted by Pegasus who teleports them to an ancient Egyptian temple where they witness an ancient brick duel. There Pegasus attempts to take them to the shadow realm but is stopped by Yami Bakuda resulting in everyone losing their memories. Also Keith turns from an American into a Polish man and takes away Joey's card. The duelists enter the arena just like Pegasus with bodyguards. Whoever wins the tournament gets the prize money of 3 million dollars, the chance to compete against Pegasus and should he win that too, he will be granted a wish plus he will become world champion, king of the duelists. Yugi vs Mai starts. Right at the beginning Mai protects her harpier with the mirror which halves the attack points of all attacking monsters of Yugi just like that. Redecorate the harpier a bit to make her stronger and the first monster of Yugi is destroyed. Then Yugi tries to attack again and apparently overlooks the mirror which weakens his monster again. Mai's turn is now simply skipped after she played the Harpier's Feather Duster. But anyway, it's her turn twice in a row and so she clears Yugi's field. 
force Yugi's Dark Magician to attack with Shadow of Ice and thus weaken it, destroy Yugi's trap with another duster and destroy the Magician. In any case, it doesn't look good for Yugi. A little talk nujutsu from Mai and Yugi overcomes his Vietnam flashback from the last duel against Kaiba. Using Brainwash, steer the dragon to launch it at Mai with the turtle, destroying the mirror wall. Mai gets a triplets which have 2400 attack points and Yugi apparently overlooks Monster Reborn. Mystical Elf in defense position, which of course isn't forced to attack by Shadow of Ice because she's a woman. Makes sense. By some time, using Monster Reborn to get Gaia back instead of for example, the Dark Magician, with which he could then destroy the hub here, but then he activates the Black Luster ritual and forces Mai to give up with the Black Luster soldier. The winner is decided and Yugi is in the final. Next duel, Joey vs Keith. Except Keith has stolen Joey's card. If Joey doesn't find his card in 5 minutes, he'll be disqualified. Mai gives him her card because she doesn't need it anymore anyway and so the duel can start. Keith plays with his machine deck, which is why Joey with monsters with magic attacks brings as much as Jojo and Boruto. That is nothing at all. It gets even worse when Keith turns Zoa into Metal Zoa while Joey attacks with his boosted Flame Swordsman. Unfortunately, his attack is also a kind of spell, so the attack is not only cancelled by the armor of the Metal Zoa, but also completely thrown back and Joey even loses life points, although the Flame Swordsman was actually stronger. Let Metal Zoa run into a trap, destroy a monster and destroy a second monster with another trap. So it doesn't look so bad for Joey. But with the barrel dragon he destroys all of Joey's monsters at once. However, even he can stand up to the ravages of time and an aged baby dragon. But a time capsule will. Provide the red eyes with a new armor and destroy the barrel dragon. Keith still has the slot machine on the field though, which gets 700 attack or defense points per 7 slot card that Keith keeps cheating his way into. A time bomb is attached to Joey's red eye, explodes but doesn't do anything because Joey equipped his dragon with a dragon's claw, making it 600 points stronger. It isn't really explained why the effect is nullified, but hey, Keith loses life points too. Next slot machine card and shield and sword makes Keith's monster stronger than Joey's dragon, which he brings back with a time machine. This gives him more attack points again, so Joey wins the duel. It's also revealed that Keith has stolen Joey's card and cheated from time to time. He then jumps to Pegasus to threaten him with his finger, but falls through a trapdoor of the island. The final is on, Joey against Yugi. A little flashback of what the two have been through so far and then it starts. Joey destroys Yugi's Celtic Guardian and ends his turn, which Yugi criticizes because Joey just leaves his monster standing there without protection, destroys the monster with Gaia and then just leaves it there without protection. Respect. After Yugi has his summon skull on the field, Joey summons his flame swordsman along with the shield and sword card to destroy the summon skull instead of playing sword and shield first and then the flame swordsman. Gaia dragon champion destroys the swordsman, for which he only had to cheat minimally to get it on the field. Everyone praises Yugi like he won just because he hit his magician behind the heads. Really random. Some Pegasus passed who must have lost his wife. With a head destroyed, the Skull Dragon gets trapped and weakened, allowing Yugi's strengthened Dark Magician to destroy it. With a Time Wizard, Joey now wants to decide everything. It works. Joey's Baby Dragon becomes the Thousand Dragon and Yugi's Magician got old. So old that he became the Dark Sage and can block the attack. With Monster Reborn, Yugi gets the Sky Dragon back and ends the duel in tears and heartbreak. Yugi doesn't take the money after the final but hands it to Joey for his sister's surgery and now wants to duel against Pegasus to free some souls. The big five are watching the livestream of the duel between Yugi and Pegasus. The cards are shuffled and Pegasus says that it goes well with Yugi's cards and it begins. Meanwhile, Tristan searches for Mukuba and finds a hidden passage where he actually finds him. The guards get the message but so does Bakura. Once again, Pegasus is able to predict every move that Yugi makes and knows what cards are in Yugi's hand at all times, which of course doesn't make things easier for Yugi. Bakura wants to go to see where Tristan is and certainly has no ulterior motives. Pegasus keeps knowing what Yugi is up to and is able to counter all the time. Tristan is caught and threatened with fingers, but luckily Bakura arrives and ties up the guards so they can escape. During the duel, Toon World returns, which causes even more problems for Yugi. The Celtic Guardian attacks the Toon Mermaid, but she easily deflects the attack and destroys the Celtic Guardian because... 
Yes. With the Summon Skull in the Toon Army as well and constantly predicting what cards Yugi has in his hand and what Yugi is even thinking, Yugi is increasingly insecure. In the meantime, Tristan and Bakura are at a dead end. Hide the magician under the head to buy some time, though Pegasus can read his mind and because Yugi knows which head the magician is under, a little mind reading is enough to catch him. Talk to the ghost in the puzzle and keep switching back and forth, changing thoughts over and over. Not only was he able to protect the dark magician this way, but this tactic works perfectly as Pegasus is confused. Yeah, but pretty dumb to tell the whole tactic straight ahead. Bakura sends his many tabak at the guards, while Tristan notices that Bakura isn't acting like himself. The Back and forth switching continues to work out perfectly, allowing Yugi to not only destroy the Toon World, but also all the monsters at the same time. Yami Bakura wants Mokuba's soulless body. Then Tristan tricks him and throws the ring somewhere in the forest to drag two lifeless bodies to Joey and Tia. Pegasus wants to continue the duel in the Shadow Realm, where Yugi Muto has a hard time keeping up physically. Pegasus' next move is using the Dark Eyes Illusionist, which can paralyze all the opponent's monsters, but he sacrifices it for Relinquished who absorbs the curse of the dragon, uses it as a shield, so Yugi has virtually attacked himself with it. The Dark Magician is also absorbed. Yugi Mutu plays one last card face down, so Pegasus doesn't know what it is. Yugi falls asleep and everyone outside the Shadow Realm can feel it, but can't get in, so Yami Yugi has to finish this alone. Only Pegasus can read his mind again. Jigen Bakudan will explode in two rounds, taking Relinquished and the Dark Magician with it and causing Yugi to lose the duel. Yami Yugi is feeling a bit uncertain. Fortunately, Grandpa Mutu comes along to boost his confidence. The friends do the best to support Yugi and as a result, Pegasus can no longer read his mind. Why? Yeah. Yugi gets his magician again and brainwashes Relinquished with Jigen to summon the magician of Black Chaos. Next turn, Pegasus fuses his Relinquished into Thousand Eyes Restrict, which paralyzes Yugi's monsters, but Yugi has Kuribo and multiplies it, filling up the Restrict and stuff his eyes so they start randomly to explode. Now weakened, Yugi has a clear path to finish the duel and emerge victorious with his magician of Black Chaos. The fog clears, everyone is happy, Pegasus plays hide and seek and Buck Bakura is awake again, though he still has his ring for some reason. Our friends set out to search for Pegasus. Pegasus releases the three souls. Yami Bakura comes along, who acts like a card reader and fights a ray battle against Pegasus, which Pegasus loses and thus also gets rid of his eye. Pegasus is carried out. Our friends break into his room to understand that Pegasus had a tragic past. Already as a child, he was with Cecilia. They got married, but she got seriously ill and passed away shortly after. To bring her back from the dead. Yeah, what the fuck. He went to Egypt where he met Shadi and got an eye implant. Now that gave him hopes and the idea for dual monsters. Shadi shows up in front of Yugi, goes into his head only to find there a room of a kindergarten kid, so somehow Yugi Mutos. And another room belonging to the pharaoh. With me, there would probably just be Patrick riding a seahorse. Shadi is allowed to explore freely and encounters Trap, but is rescued by Yugi Muto. In the past, there was probably something similar to dual monsters, but with stone tablets. The dark magician wants to attack them, Shadi wants to call the blue eyes, but Yugi manages to convince the magician not to attack. Shadi now knows that he's the chosen one and leaves again. Yugi receives another card which only exists once and isn't particularly important in the series. He also gets the prize money which he immediately gives to Joey as protection money. Mokuba is reunited with Kaiba, he thanks Yugi and they go back to Domino City where Grandpa has recovered from his heart attack. Unfortunately, Rebecca is waiting for them. She wants her blue eyes back and is the number one ranked duelist in America. She challenges Solomon to a duel with the stakes being that if she wins, she gets the blue eyes back, but if she loses, then that's just the way it is. Only she isn't dueling Solomon, she's dueling Yugi. At the same time, Solomon finds her tactics very familiar. She acts weak and childish at first, but then becomes serious and suddenly she's like a changed person. After the Millennium Shield is summoned, Solomon realizes why her tactics seem so familiar. She's the granddaughter of Professor Arthur Hawkins, who Grandpa Mutu is accused of stealing the blue eyes from. Solomon tells about his relationship with Arthur. Arthur discovered that Dual Monsters was played with stone tablets in ancient times, but nobody believed him except for Solomon. One day, he found some evidence, but the ruins collapsed during the expedition, trapping them for a few days. They ran out of water and had to duel to determine who would survive, with Arthur playing just like Rebecca. 
But first we come back to this duel. Turtle and Brainwash launch the shield directly at her and clear the rest with the summon skull. In revenge she clears Yugi's field as well. The next turn Yugi would lose. He draws his last card and just like Solomon did in the past he gives up. Arthur arrives to explain the defeat and to tell what happened during the expedition. If Solomon hadn't given up Arthur would have died. Rebecca learns that dueling is about friendship and even gets the card that Yugi won. Kaiba wants to fire the big five who are trying to talk their way out. But he has something better to do first because he wants to play some virtual reality. Deck in, helmet on and let's go. At first everything goes well, then the blue ninja who wasn't programmed that way at all shows up and locks up the blue eyes and then also Kaiba who gets a bit shocked in real life and they also try to lock up Mokuba. He escapes to our friends who shall help to save Kaiba. So into a laboratory of Kaiba where they put Mokuba, Yugi and Joey into the virtual world. Where they have to fight immediately against zombies. Shield and sword kill monsters and chase a fairy leading them to a city. From there they try to cross the desert but get caught in a storm. They receive a tip on how to survive it. They need quite RPG style a certain card which there is purely by chance at the Colosseum to win and which Joey is then permitted to get it. Tristan and Tia manage to barricade a sliding door. That's quite an achievement. Just before Joey's flame swordsman is destroyed Joey reveals his identity causing Mai to stop the attack. They explain everything to her, grab the card and run through the desert. They arrive at the temple with a maze filled with labyrinth tanks. They outsmart them, follow a fairy again and find Mokubi. They let the gate guardian explode while Kaiba is supposed to be offered as a sacrifice to the mythic dragon. Mokubi is actually a princess named Edina. Weird that Kaiba is modeling a princess after his little brother. The princess is also supposed to be sacrificed which our friends naturally want to stop. Dress up, be attacked by monsters during which the princess is kidnapped but it turns out to be Mokuba in a princess dress. From above you can see the machine that is supposed to reach the flying castle so they use time magic to repair it. The plane works again. With it we go to the flying castle where a few monsters were destroyed, the fairy sacrifices himself and Yugi becomes a super saiyan. Mokuba frees Kaiba. Kaiba makes his way out with the stack while the others try to get in. They then meet up somewhere in the middle or something. The big five pull up to the highest difficulty which summons the mythic dragon and that in the room where only dragons can attack. To protect Mokuba, Joey dies. Mai dies to distract the mythic dragon and Mokuba sacrifices himself for Kaiba. Kaiba teams up with Yugi and fuses his ultimate with the black luster soldier to summon the dragon master knight and destroy the mythic dragon. The people hail them as heroes and the princess who was actually the mystic elf brings everyone back to life. The game is over and everyone can leave leading to a happy ending just in time as the guards enter. Solomon is in a bad mood because a new game store has opened selling dungeon dice monsters. Us. Everyone at school knows about it including their new classmate Duke Devlin who is popular with the girls. He pranks Joey but then they make a deal. They'll each create a deck from boosters and the loser has to do what the other wants for a week. Duke is also the owner of the new game store. The duel is broadcasted live and Joey does well at first reducing Duke to only 50 life points but ultimately loses. As a result he has to wear a dog costume and has to bark like one as well. Yugi doesn't want to watch this any longer so he duels Duke. Although not in duel monsters but in dungeon dice monster. If Yugi wins Joey is free. If he loses the title of king of games goes to Duke plus Yugi is never allowed to play duel monsters ever again. The arena is rebuilt and the duel begins. Yugi has 15 dices that he has to choose from randomly because he has no idea how it works. Each round players get 3 dices and have to roll a pair in order to take an action. Each player also has 3 hearts. If a player's hearts reach 0 the game is over. You can summon one monster after another while Yugi has no luck and can only summon one shortly before monsters can damage his hearts. Duke has much more luck and talks a bit about why he hates Yugi. You see Duke wanted to market the game together with Pegasus where Pegasus immediately beats him up in the first duel but Pegasus never got back to him after losing to Yugi. So now Duke is salty and wants to finish off Yugi. He even takes away one life point from him already. Special attacks time 2 equals Duke's two monsters are down. New knight versus new ox. Knight wins by rules he shouldn't even know. However Yugi has a problem. Duke has placed his red squares in a way that Yugi can't reach Duke's hearts without destroying all of Duke's monsters first. 
but Duke opens a portal, which Yugi takes advantage of and also summons a portal, positioning his ninja to take a heart from Duke. Duke tries to destroy the ninja, but Yugi saves him and takes another heart before he is destroyed. Duke also uses the warp to destroy two of Yugi's monsters, which makes him feel insecure. Joey tries to boost his confidence and Yugi gets back into the game, rolling the dice and taking revenge on Duke's monsters. Except the monster just barely survives after all and destroys Yugi's last monster taking away another of his hearts. Yugi has only one move left. One last throw with which he calls the Dark Magician. With him he pixels the monster in front of his life points. But Yugi counters again by equipping his monster with the monster cannon, which Yugi counters again with the spell heads. Then the mystic box so he can get right in front of Duke to end the duel. Duke apologizes and they become friends. In the end he even gets an email saying that dungeon dice monsters has been accepted and will be marked widely. So let's get to a conclusion. In total there are 45 good, 3 average and 1 bad episodes. Overall I really like the season. Especially all the effects that are just so random and they more or less just do whatever they want. The main thing is that it somehow fits in the end. I absolutely love it.